I should have checked that. Anyway, that's annoying. Whatever. So this one we have, we're determining whether a group of series is convergent or divergent. So let's get started. So this thing, we have this series, k squared, e to the minus k, the summation from k equals 1 to infinity. And because this is a negative exponent in front of this k, it's equivalent to this. We just write it, you know, 1 over something. 1 over, if we take x to some power, you know, minus k, it's the same thing as 1 over x to the k. So this is a, the same, this is just an equivalent way of writing this. What's nice about writing it this way is if we take the limit of this, we get a ratio of infinities. And this is a L'Hopital's rule should start to pop up. If we have this sort of thing going on, we can just take the derivative and take the limit again. And we basically keep taking the limit and the derivative until we get something where one of the terms is in zero. In this case, if we do the derivative twice, we get that this is just, since e to the k, the derivative of e to the k is just, actually technically we're not taking the derivative of this, we take the derivative of the top and the bottom separately. So we take the derivative of k squared, we get 2 to the 2k. We take the derivative of e to the k, we get e to the k. Or, then that still has infinity over infinity. We can just apply the rule again to this thing. And so if we take the, so we take the derivative of 2k with respect to k, we get 2. This stays e to the k. So basically the limit, this approaches basically 2 over infinity. And we say that anything over infinity is 0. And so since the, in the long term, each term is approaching zero, the series will eventually be convergent. And it's a similar sort of story with this problem, basically. So with this one, we have n squared e to the minus n cubed, the infinite sum of that. And we can basically write that in the same way. You know, since we have a negative exponent, it's negative n cubed we can put that in the bottom. So you have n squared over e to the n cubed. And if we take the limit of that, obviously it's going to be infinity of infinity. The limit of this is as x approaches infinity is infinity, and the limit is x, as n approaches infinity of this is infinity. So basically, we have to do L'Hopital's rules. So we take the derivative of the top and the bottom separately. We take the derivative of n squared, we get 2n. We take the derivative of this ugly looking thing, we get 3n squared e to the n cubed. And since we have an n in the numerator and the denominator, the n's cancel. So we end up with this 2 over 3n e to the n cubed. And obviously, this bottom term is going to approach infinity. Well, this one doesn't change. So this, so each term as, so a n as n approaches infinity approaches 0. So the term converges. As n approaches infinity, a n approaches 0. That's what I meant. Sorry. This one's a little bit, we use a slightly different test for this. So basically we have this series right here. And we know, and this is fairly obvious, n cubed plus one third to the n is always greater than n cubed. If n cubed plus something, it's always going to be greater than n cubed, even if this approaches zero as the limit approaches infinity. It's always still greater. So what we also know is that this series converges. Now I'm not going to prove this, I think it's fairly straightforward. The limit as this approaches infinity will approach zero, so each term is going to get smaller and smaller. So this series will eventually converge to something. So basically, since we have this, if we if we take one over this, one over n cubed plus one third of the n, and one over n cubed, the inequality sign flips. So we know that this is less than this for all n. So we know that the first series converges because this series converges and this series is always less than this series so this series has to converge as well and it's a similar story with this one although it's a tiny bit more complicated so you have this ugly looking series right here one over k square root of k squared plus one but what we know is we know that square root of k squared plus one is greater than k because square root of k squared plus one is greater than square root of k squared which if we're talking about positive integers is just equal to k. So we know that this is greater than this, so if we in, if we take one over both sides, we flip the inequality. So we this implies that this 
is less than 1 over k times k, which is 1 over k squared. And since 1 over k squared converges and each of these terms is less than each of these terms, our first series must also converge as well. And this one gets a little bit more ugly, but I'll walk you through. It's not too bad. So basically, if you um, a hint for these, if you're ever going to, if you ever see a factorial in a series, always do the ratio test because it just ends up working out nicely. So for the ratio test, you need term n plus 1, which is this, and you need term n, which is this. And so basically what you do is you take the ratio of these two terms, and you get this abhorrent looking fraction. And once we simplify that, since we're dividing by all of this, basically what we're doing is we're multiplying this top one by the inverse of this. So we're multiplying this top fraction by n factorial over 3n, 3 to the n, times n squared. So if we simplify that out, we get this. Further simplifying, since 3 to the n plus 1 over, there's, there's one more of these than these, 3 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n just becomes 3. And n factorial over n plus 1 factorial, if you write this out, this is, this is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and so on. Basically, what you end up with is you end up with just, you know, 1 over n plus 1. And then you finally have this over this. And so basically, you end up with 3 over n plus 1 times n squared plus 2n plus 1 over n squared. And so if you multiply all this junk out, you get this. And then we get this. We get the infinity over infinity. So what we can do is we just take the derivative twice. And we eventually we end up with something, end up with 6 on top over 6n plus 2. This approaches 0. So this limit must approach 0. So this ratio, the limit of this ratio must approach 0. So therefore, the series must be convergent. This one's a little bit more shaky as far as the logic goes, but it's basically the same thing. It's a slightly different. This one, we basically argue that this series gets arbitrarily close to this series. So we end up with 6 to the k over k to the k. And now obviously, for k greater than 6, this is always going to be bigger than this. So this will eventually approach 0 as k approaches infinity, so this whole series will converge. And finally, we end up basically back where we started with this. We take the limit as, you know, you know n approaches infinity of a n, we get infinity over infinity. So we take the derivative and we take the limit again. We get this. We take the limit, we take the derivative, and then we take the limit again, we get 0. So the limit of this must have been 0. So these terms must be getting arbitrarily small. Therefore the limit must, so therefore the series must converge.